Hello, it's James Photography. I'm just going to do a video about my history in what got me into photography. So, I'm <laughs> um, going to talk about why I started in this business. Um, now, I'd love to have a story saying, like, I found my great grandfather's camera in the attic or it was passed down to me through generations. I'd love to have a story like Ross Harvey. He's a British wedding photographer, he's awesome. Um, and he was interviewed on YouTube once and his story is that he started getting into photography and his dad bought him a Nikon D700 and a prime lens uh, for his birthday with a note on it saying follow your dreams and now he's like a fantastic wedding photographer. I bought the same cameras as him because um, of his style of photography and the quality and everything but that's his story. He's got this amazing story that his father said, go on son, follow your dreams and all that. And I'd love to have a story like that, but that isn't how I got into photography. It's one of them things that for years and years and years, I've always thought, no, I must learn photography one day. Oh, I want to give it a go, but I just never got around to it. And then we got into this digital age um, and I bought a cheap bridge camera years ago. I went to South America traveling a bit and um, I was, uh, did the Inca Trail so I wanted a decent camera um, so I bought something from Dixon's I think uh, it was a Fuji bridge camera it cost me 120 pound like seven megapixels and I took that and it took some okay shots but as soon as it got dark or low light bearing in mind I was in automatic they're all blurry and rubbish so I sort of knew the limitations of that camera but it was okay and it was a Fuji so the camera straight the picture straight out of camera weren't too bad the colors and the contrast and everything so that was that, but it didn't get me into photography. I just shot in automatic and a lot of the shots when it was low light were rubbish, they were just blurry. Then that camera started to play up. And at the same time I had a, a touch screen phone, I can't even remember what it was uh, when they started to come out. It wasn't a smartphone, but that started to play up as well. Um, so at the same time I needed a new camera and a new phone. So I thought, phones are getting good on cameras these days. So I googled what's the best camera phone and what came up at the time was the Nokia Lumia 1020 and here it is. Now I don't use this anymore because sometimes the phone itself will freeze um, so you want to make a phone call send a text message and it for some weird reason it just stops. But at the time this was the best phone camera. It's not now because you've got the iPhone 10s and all that and the Samsung's but at the time and what swayed it for me when I saw the numbers was 42 megapixel, 42. And it's got that like, bulbous thing there to house all the system and it's got a Zeiss lens and it's got image stabilization. And I was like, wow, this looks amazing. And I started looking at the pictures um, from the photos from this thing and I read lots and lots of things saying, oh, it's a DSLR killer and you don't need a fancy camera anymore when you've got something like this in your pocket. So I bought one. So I, got a new phone and a new camera and as far as my old Fuji camera goes this absolutely smokes it you can't zoom like the other one but as far as image quality goes this is just blows it out of the water so I thought great I've got this amazing weird yellow thing with an eye on it kind of odd but I was chuffed as nuts with it um, so I started going around taking pictures of everything with this thing and it is good it's very very good image quality 42 megapixels you can crop in it's absolutely insane now what got me into photography was this phone this very very phone because my nephew got married a few years ago and i said to him oh i've just bought this camera this new camera that's come out and it's nuts like you know and i'll, I'll do some great photos at your wedding and he went yeah that's great we have got a photographer but yeah the more photos the merrier so there i was at his wedding doing my david bailey bit you know with my phone <laughs> and uh, I was sort of experimenting a bit because this had um, controls on it you could like manually control shutter speed and white balance and ISO and I was sort of jiggling around with all those settings and getting used to that and editing it in the phone as well like sort of up in the contrast a bit and things like that so I think this shoots raw as well actually so you can pull out quite a bit of shadows um, on the phone anyway so I was at, at the wedding and I was photographing away and I thought they were pretty good. Now the ones where it was bright and sunny and outside, they were. They were pretty good actually for a phone. Very, very good. But obviously all the indoor ones and at the reception were just not very good. They were grainy and blurry. Um, but I was watching the other photographer and he had two cameras on him. I think he had uh, two Canons. 
because I didn't know anything about all that back then. But I was watching him. He wasn't the friendliest guy in the world, but he was, you know, he had two cameras, the gear, the lenses, some speed lights, and he seemed to know what he was doing. And I did speak to him during the day saying, how can you get sharp images in the evening? Like, why are all the images blurry? And he said, just turn your ISO up to the max. So I went, oh, right, great. So I did on this phone. I think he did it deliberately because I did turn the ISO up to the max. And then when I saw the pictures, <laughs> they would just say, look like they're in a sandstorm. So I think he did that deliberately um, anyway. But I thought the photos weren't bad. So I gave them to my nephew and all that. And then later he gave me the online link to the album, the wedding album from the professional photographer. And that's when it hit me, when I saw his pictures. I mean, they wouldn't win any awards, his pictures, but back then compared to this, what I thought was a DSLR killer, that's what swung it for me. I was like, oh, oh, that's the difference. He had prime lenses, the background was um, out of focus, or the subject was in focus, he had that lovely bokeh. Everything was sharp, there was no blur, all the evening shots were good, he used the speed lights properly, everything was well lit and exposed, and the composition, everything about the shots just looked good, especially when you can use prime lenses where you've got the subject in focus and the background's out of focus, lots of that. And he edited the shots as well, so everything was vibrant and colourful, and I just thought, ah, that's the difference. And that's what got me into photography, because I wanted to get like that. And I sort of reached a brick wall with this phone. There's only so much, because you can't control aperture on this and things like that. And you can't start putting speed lights on and things. And that's where I wanted to learn more. And with a phone as good as it was back then, just didn't cut it. So I bought myself a crop sensor camera, a Nikon one, and started from there. And then just progressively got better and better and started getting different lenses, getting used to shooting in manual, getting some speed lights. And I moved up to full frame and faster lenses and prime lenses and so on and so on. And then the editing and then Lightroom and Photoshop and all that. <laughs> but this is what got my journey started into photography. And I still keep this, even though the phone doesn't work so much anymore, I don't rely on it, but the camera still works. And I keep this as a little camera, really. If I'm out and about and I'll just take this, it's, you know, rather than carrying a, a big camera with me, I will take this. It is very, very good. Um, but when it comes to photographing something professional or like a wedding, I soon realized compared to proper cameras, it just didn't stand a chance. So that's what got me into photography. It's not a very romantic story. It's not very nostalgic, but it was this weird yellow phone. <laughs> it's a really boring story, but somebody might be interested.